that is the schedule okay we are we are not given si fi we are given ti di so if we assign si fi to each job then that's uh, that uh, clearly tells at what time the job should start and what time the job should finish that is obvious now uh, initially we assume that all the jobs so this is the suppose this is the timeline okay okay and this is some time and the t is increasing in this direction so we we designate this time as the s starting time okay and that time when all the n jobs are available to us to me okay so uh, this is the global starting time when all the things are in hand let's say this is some some time basis. and uh, if a job is given a starting time of suppose si then its finish time can be easily assigned as fi is equal to si plus ti this is uh, obvious right so basically we need to we need to basically say what are the starting times of each uh, job okay so, so as as you as you know that uh, in the last algorithm uh, in a simple interval scheduling problem if you remember we considered uh, three heuristics there may be many. One was uh, shortest, uh, shortest duration first. Like uh, if so, in the earlier, in the last problem, if you remember, there were this uh, each job came in the form of SI, SI, FI, SI, FI, and we we uh, created several heuristics. Like one was like okay, fi minus fi. Okay. So that is called the uh, shortest job kind of. Yeah. And there was uh, okay uh, based on the based on the initial value. Of, I mean smallest fi first, or uh, something like. Uh, say some other smallest uh, conflicting job smallest number of conflicting i mean every interval conflicts with certain number of other intervals so whoever conflicts small i i choose that okay but we saw that none of them uh, actually give good solution and uh, so here also in this model uh, suppose we want to consider this model of the problem if we consider this model of the problem then uh, we will see that uh, there may be many different heuristics one may be suppose based on ti so what is ti ti is the duration basically duration of the job and we can we can say that smallest uh, ti first that may be huge so what uh, what will be the way we will uh, sort all the jobs based on ti values in increasing order and then we'll take the smallest ti smallest uh, ti job with the smallest ti and we'll schedule that and then uh, we will take the uh, next job with uh, higher ti and we'll schedule that and so on in this way we'll keep on uh, scheduling see once i choose a particular heuristic then i i don't have much to think i can i can simply keep on uh, scheduling basically i can i can uh, assign the sifi values basically okay so so i, I can be i can do that and uh, of course once i schedule them uh, I can calculate uh, how much is the 
I mean, whether everybody finishes it, the job within deadline or not. I can, and I can calculate if I if I wish, I can calculate this value lateness uh, li. That is the lateness value of each job, uh, provided it finishes later than its deadline. Uh, I calculate lateness as uh, li, which is equal to f i minus d i. And uh, if if i is smaller than or equal to d i, then I, I just assign li to be zero. It is not let it finishes in time or early. So I can calculate that, and I can calculate the average lateness. Okay, all those things I can do. So uh, that is one way to do things. Another uh, interesting heuristic can be uh, slack time. Slack time. So smallest uh, slack time first. So what is slack time? Slack time is something like uh, it's di minus ti. Okay, di minus ti. Uh, so 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 suppose uh, suppose uh, let's let's draw and try to understand. So suppose uh, this is the timeline, and uh, so suppose some some job has all all the jobs suppose has come in. and suppose uh, this job a job has to finish within this time. Okay, this is the deadline. That but the job duration is this much. Job duration is this much. So what I can do is uh, this part. This is the di minus ti. Okay. This part is the flat time. So flat time means uh, it is that amount of flexibility you have to shift this uh, left or right so you can you can actually shift this job up to here but in this case your uh, slack time still remains slack time is now this part plus this part and it can be shown that this part and this part is equal to this part okay so uh, this is the slack time so more slack means uh, more flexibility you have to schedule it. Less slack means less flexibility. So you can think of scheduling jobs with small slack time. Okay, uh, first. That way also you can do that. So likewise, there may be other ways of doing things. Uh, but it can be shown that none of them actually, we can, we can find counter, we can find counter examples. Uh, through which we can show that mm, it doesn't give a good solution, actually. I mean, what is the good solution? Remember here, the good solution is the minimizing of maximum lateness. Of course, in each of these way of scheduling, you can find out, you can find out the lateness. And you can plot max lateness. You can plot the average lateness. All those things you can do. Now, uh, what is the solution? I mean, by following a certain heuristic, we get the solution. So what is that heuristic? That is EDF or earliest deadline first. Okay, this is the heuristic. So what is this heuristic? Basically, you will uh, do this thing. You will see all the jobs based on their deadlines, okay? And then you will schedule them one after another based on smallest deadline first. So, uh, so uh, I, I'm just writing the algorithm. Roughly, the algorithm is like this: sort all jobs based on deadline let's say they are uh, arranged in this order d1 d2 dn remember the jobs may be uh, actually need not be i mean it it does not have it may be something i mean uh, uh, 
in some different order but we assume that okay, when they are uh, they are arranged in this increasing deadline order they are they are they form this way and then uh, we assume that uh, Let's say we introduce one f equal to s, its temporary value. S, what is s? S is the global start time. I mean, where when all the jobs are ready, I have all the n jobs in hand. So then I can do for i equal to one to n for all the uh, jobs is I assign this thing. I assign the start time. Because as I told, if I assign the start time, the finish time is automatically set. So SI is equal to, I can say F. When I have S set to F, then I have its FI also. FI is essentially, uh, it's SI plus TI, something like that. And the modified F, I have this temporary variable. This the F is just a boundary. I'm shifting to the right. F is essentially what? F plus T I. So you, you can actually, this one, uh, you can make it uh, something like, yeah. This works basically. Actually, for this S Y, you can you can re, you can also replace by F because earlier I I am assigning F to S I, hmm. so this is equivalent. You can you can equal to F, and this thing you keep on doing. Okay, this part, this entire part, you keep on repeating for everyone. Okay. So what you will get after this, so after n steps, you will have all the, for all i, si, fi will be set. When this algorithm terminates, it's all the si, fi values will be set, okay? And you can, you can say they are scheduled in this manner, some of them, uh, you, you can actually identify what is the job, what are the jobs that satisfy that they, they are finished within their deadline, what are the jobs that misses their deadline, by how much, all these things you can calculate. Okay. Now, a couple of things we need to do is we need to show that, yes, this is the optimal algorithm, or this is the best that we can have. Uh, so, so what we do, uh, we we prove the optimality uh, in a in a certain way. So, so if you if you think that in this algorithm, I mean, uh, in in this algorithm. You remember that this SI, I equal to one to n corresponding to this DI. That means after the assignment of this deadline, the IDs of the jobs are actually changed, basically. So this DI corresponding to S1, actually, S2. Right, this uh, job one, I should say, okay. This corresponds to job one, this corresponds to job two, this corresponds to job three. So I just rename the jobs. Actually. Okay. Uh, initially, this may not be the job one. Initially, the jobs are coming in arbitrary order. So after I, I sort them based on deadline, I rename them. This is my job one. This is my job two. This is my job three. This is my job n. Okay. And then I execute this. Account, this is So now I I need to show that. Uh, this is an optimal solution. Optimal means the max lateness that is 
generated by this algorithm is the minimum. Okay. Is the minimum value. I mean, there is no algorithm which can schedule these jobs in a different way and can achieve a max lateness that is smaller than the max lateness that is generated by this algorithm. Okay, so to prove that, uh, overall we, we use some technique which is known as exchange argument. You can see this thing in detail in the book also, but uh, I'll just quickly and briefly try to tell you. Uh, what is exchange argument? Exchange argument says that we think or we assume that there is an optimal solution. That means there is an optimal uh, algorithm which gives me an optimal solution and uh, that optimal solution means it keeps a particular assignment of SIFI to all the jobs such that the maximum lateness is minimum. Okay. It gives, now how it gives, we do not know. We, we, we just assume there is some optimal algorithm. Now this gives a sequence of, uh, um, sequence of SIFI values for all the jobs. So what we do, we slowly modify actually this thing. We slowly modify this opt, okay? We slowly modify this opt through some intermediate steps and we reach to the ordering or the sequence in which our algorithm actually inserts or assigns SIFI values uh, to the jobs into that. And in each of these intermediate steps, we try to show that, so here is the best, let's say best maximum lateness. Let's, let, let's say that value is say L, L star. Now, what we do, we, we modify this to op star, op prime in such a way that, that that thing does not change. We also do it in such a way it does not change. And therefore, we can claim that when it reaches this thing, our sequence, there also the maximum lateness does not change. Therefore, we can say, even though I'm transforming this schedule opt slowly through some intermediate schedule uh, to, the, to our schedule, the maximum lateness does not change. So that essentially means, even though our algorithm creates a different schedule than the opt. Uh, it has the same maximum lateness as the optimal, or in other way, our algorithm is optimal also. Okay, so so to do that, uh, the first thing that we say is that um, something which is uh, obvious. If we say something or, or, or claim or lemma, you can say claim. So claim is that uh, our algorithm produce a sheet, our algorithm creates a schedule with no idle time. So what is what is idle time? Idle time means uh, suppose a job is scheduled here and then another job is scheduled here and then another job is scheduled here okay then this is this part and this part these are called the idle time okay so we, our, 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 we claim that our algorithm creates a schedule with no idle time this is some sense obvious that uh, we, we actually assign 
um, the SI as soon as it finishes, right? So we, we can, that easily comes from the algorithm, okay? This algorithm. So we claim this, that our algorithm creates a schedule with no idle time, okay? Uh, the second thing that uh, we claim is something like uh, we, we introduced some concept called inversion. Inversion. So what is inversion? Let's say I consider two jobs, let's say I and J, okay? And let's say this I has a corresponding TI, DI, and J has a corresponding TJ, DJ, okay? And, and also it is the case that DI is greater than DJ, suppose. That means the deadline uh, of I is actually more than that of J. So in that case, according to our algorithm, who should come first? So first, J should be scheduled because our algorithm follows the earliest or smallest deadline first. So earlier, J should be scheduled and then I. But suppose, suppose, that in a schedule, okay, in a schedule, because our algorithm always follows this step that uh, smallest deadline first, but what is followed by the optimal algorithm, we do not know, okay. So in the optimal algorithm, it may so happen that it does not follow our uh, criteria. So or whatever, some other algorithm, it may not follow our criteria. So it may so happen that in that uh, algorithm, optimal algorithm or some other, other algorithm, the jobs have been scheduled in such a way that A comes before, okay? But our algorithm never uh, ha uh, produces a schedule like that, but other algorithm can create that. So in that case, we say that there is an inversion. Inversion, this is not as per our algorithm, basically. Inverse of this. So according to our algorithm, a DI should come before TI. I mean, I should be scheduled before J because, okay, uh, so here I has a higher deadline. So that means J should be scheduled before, okay? But instead of that, what has what is found that I is happening before J? Suppose in some schedule, okay? So there is an inversion if I is scheduled before J in this case. Right, so in this particular case, So if this is the input, this is the input situation. If this is the input situation, and if I is scheduled before J in this case, then we say that there is an inversion, okay? So hope this is understood. So what is, by knowing this inversion, I can easily claim that our algorithm does not have any inversion because we always uh, follow the heuristic so that uh, there is no inversion because smallest deadline first. Okay, so it is no chance that there will be an inversion, but other schedules may have inversions. And uh, in spite of that, it may be possible that they manage to uh, reduce the maximum lateness. So to do that, uh, so what we what we claim now a uh, bigger lemma, which is something like this, that all schedules 
with no inversion and no idle time as have the same max lateness. This is one uh, very important lemma that we want to uh, use. So the statement of the lemma is all schedules with no inversion and no idle time have the same maximum lateness. That our uh, schedule has no idle time that we first showed. And also we showed that our schedule have uh, no inversion basically. Our schedule has no inversion. So, but we do not know what kind of uh, schedule uh, is there in the optimal, okay? So that's why what we do is we, we take actually the optimal schedule, okay? See, if the optimal schedule has no inversion and no, then essentially that is our schedule. Essentially that is our schedule. But it may not be the case that optimal schedule is exactly our schedule, then our schedule is optimal. Okay. So optimal schedule have may have inversion, may have idle time. So the case of idle time is very easy. If you, you can understand that first forget that inversion consideration. Just consider idle time. Idle time means actually there will be some gap between jobs. So if I, if I if I remove this gap, then there will be schedule like one after another. Okay, if I if I they will compact it basically. And of course, in that case, the finish time of this job, which is uh, finishing late, will be shifted to the left. So there, therefore, uh, the the lateness will decrease because of this fact that li is equal to fi minus di since di does not change but fi decreases due to this compaction so therefore lateness increases of course the the maxim the lateness will decrease for everyone so uh, it is quite obvious that this no idle time uh, reduction of no idle time will improve the lateness so let us not consider this lateness because this is some sort of uh, not so interesting criteria what is important is no inversion okay so uh, so now let us consider uh, let us consider so here see the statement of this lemma the lemma uh, says that all schedules with so essentially we let us take two schedules let's say s1 and s2 Okay, such that S1 has no inversion and S2 has one inversion. One inversion. Both have no idle time. Okay. Both have no idle time. Only Consideration that S1 has one inversion, S1 has zero inversion, S2 has only one inversion. That means, that means, what is that? So how how it is done? Let's say, let's say, I have this thing. Where is the inversion in S2? Let's say to uh, see to have inversion, it, it it need not be that the two jobs need to be uh, need to be side by side. Actually, it may so happen that two jobs I and J, okay, they are scheduled like in S2, one two up to 
one, two, up to I, then I plus one, up to J, then J plus one, blah, 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 up to N. And since there is only one inversion, the rest, there is no inversion. So let's say this I and this J are the job such that, I mean, DI is actually greater than DJ. Okay. So, so remember here one thing that what we are interested in the maximum lateness, right? So, how uh, this maximum lateness is hampered by this one inversion? So remember that this has no inversion. This has one inversion. That means this is the only one case where this, uh, this thing is happening. The rest others are actually not affecting the inversion. Okay. So what I can I can say is that I can uh, I can actually swap this I and J. Okay, I can so so suppose I I, I take it like this. Let's I is here, and let's say J is here. And in between there is something. Okay. So if there is some inversion, then I can just switch this inversion. And then there will be no inversion any further. Okay. There will be no inversion. So then effectively, this schedule can be moved to. S1. Okay. So if this schedule is moved to S1, then it has the same maximum lateness as S1 because actually, uh, actually, this schedule is identical, essentially identical with S1. Okay. So So consider the situation where two jobs are swapped. Okay. Let us let us now consider this case. What happens when we swap the jobs? So if you so let us say two jobs, I and J, they are uh, consecutive jobs side by side. And uh, so this is the start time. This is the finish time of, and this is also the start time of J. This is the finish time of J. Okay. So now if you swap, what happens? It looks like first becomes your J, then becomes your I. So what happens? This is your start time of J. This is your finish time of J. This is again start time of I. This is the finish time of I. Okay. Now, if you remember, what is the lateness? Lateness is essentially uh, equal to Fi minus Di. See, I am not changing the Di values. 
okay let's say uh, let's say di is somewhere because there was inversion so di actually is higher than dj so let's say this is di dj something like that so now what suffers the change here so what about the so remember the lateness depends on fi and di right so di does not change for any of these two it only the change is fi so initially i and j if you consider i and j i's finish time was fi j's finish time was fj like this these are the two timings now in this second case uh, this uh, i's finish time is here j's finish time is here so overall i see that if you consider j's finish time then j's finish time has decreased in this case okay and j's finish time has decreased in this case so therefore if j was contributing maximum lateness in the earlier case that has reduced actually that has reduced right so j is not the point of concern on the contrary if you think, think i then i's finish time increases from here to here so apparently apparently it may appear that i's lateness increases yes that is true but i will claim that i's lateness is increased j's lateness is decreased but in this case i's lateness does not increase too much actually i mean why i i claim that i's lateness increases but it remains bounded by the old lateness of j okay so how how i can uh, say that how i can say that we can we can claim this thing that the finish time of j so so i can say that j is uh, let's say let's say what happens to i because this i's lateness is increasing so remember what is the lateness of i this is the modified lateness of i that i can claim that is equal to now the earlier finish time of j minus the deadline of i remember this is the earlier finish time this is the earlier finish time of j minus the deadline of i okay and since di is greater than dj Since this di is greater than dj, that means if I if I if I if I say I can say this is so if j is something fixed, so instead of di, if I replace this by dj, then I am dj is a smaller value. I can say that I am subtracting. one bigger value from a same value this is actually smaller or equal to f j minus dr dj i can say that right because dj is smaller 
So this this definitely holds, right? So what this means? This is what this is essentially the earlier litness of J. So that means I J's current lateness decreases, but I's lateness increases. But I's lateness increases by how much? It may increase, but it never crosses the previous lateness of J. Okay. So in other words, you can say due to this inversion, the maximum lateness either remains the same or decreases due to this inversion. Okay. This maximum lateness, because there is no idle time. Remember, there is no so the maximum lateness either remains the same or decreases due to this inversion. Okay. So, if this is understood, what happened? Hmm. Okay, so I believe that uh, this is understood, right? So the main thing is that if I if I do inverse inverse, then the maximum lateness does not change. Okay, it remains the same or it decreases. So that's why we 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 can claim that all schedules with no inversion and no idle time have the same maximum lateness how do we claim this thing so first what we will do is that let us consider one schedule where there is no inversion or no idle time just like ours the schedule produced by our ld algorithm and let us consider another schedule where there is uh, there is no idle time. I mean, there may be idle time. There may be inversion. Okay, there may be inversion. So what we do, we first compact those uh, schedules. Compact those schedules means re remove the idle times. So if we remove the idle times, then it becomes a schedule with no idle time, right? But inversions may be there, right? So inversions may be there from left to right if we go. So what will happen? We will we we can we can encounter inversions, okay? As and when we encounter inversions, we just actually uh, remove them. We just swap, okay? And we we claim using this logic that swapping actually does not does not uh, does not. I mean, uh, swapping actually does not increase the maximum lateness. It can either keep the maximum lateness the same or it can decrease. These are the two possibilities. So, what we will do, we will one by one, we, we, we can keep on removing the inversion. So, if we can do that, then after a certain time, what will happen? This schedule, the second schedule, which had certain number of inversions and certain number of idle times, will be converted into a schedule which will have no inversions and no idle and by this argument that since inversion one inversion does not at all increase the max lateness so that's why this is clear that all schedules with no inversions and no idle time have the same maximum so, okay so now with this uh, thing in hand, we are in a better position uh, to prove that 
the schedule produced by the greedy algorithm has optimal maximum lateness. Okay. How do we how do we prove that? So we, we try to understand actually where our schedule and uh, and uh, their schedule can differ. Okay, uh, where our schedule and their schedule can differ. So uh, so we 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 claim that there is an optimal schedule that has no inversion and no idle time. Okay, so how to do that? So the second thing that we claim is that there is an optimal schedule with no inversion and no idle time. Remember, this is um, our uh, lemma two, you can say. Remember one thing that the first lemma is slightly different than the uh, second one. The first one says, okay, you take two schedules, whether they're optimal or not, I, I don't want, I don't uh, bother. I can just say if there is no idle time, if two schedules, if there they are, they are, uh, is no, uh, no inversion and no idle time, idle time for the time being, forget, because idle time is a trivial thing. So if two schedules are, have no idle time, then they have the same maximum lateness. Now, there is an optimal schedule with no inversion and no idle time. So idle time you can just ignore. There is an optimal schedule with no inversion. So what does this mean actually? That means there is an optimal schedule with no, inver with no inversion. Our algorithm generates an optimal schedule, uh, uh, generates a schedule with no inversion, but we, we are not able to claim our algorithm as optimal. Why? I mean, uh, what is the reason? Hmm. Try to understand the situation. So what we do, this uh, picture you have to understand that we keep on scheduling like this. This picture you have to understand. So what is this picture? This is the region. Up to this is the region. Where the schedule produced by our algorithm is in increasing deadline order. So here the deadline is slowly increasing. If the deadline is slowly increasing, then there is no inversion in our algorithm. And also if there is some other schedule where it is like this, then it also has no inversion. Right. Similarly, in this region also, the deadline is increasing due to our algorithm. So there is no inversion because if there is some change in the order of deadline, that like, I mean, I has a bigger deadline, but I is scheduled first. That is the inversion. So here, no inversion. Here, no inversion. Ooh, what can happen? What is this region? What is this region? This region, so this is increasing deadline. This is increasing deadline. Okay. Now, this is one particular case. This is those jobs which have identical deadline. Identical deadline. Okay. So all the jobs, let's say two jobs, I have I and J. Okay. So if I and J are such that DI equal to DJ, both the jobs have same deadline, 
but it may so happen that in this region, our algorithm rules in i comma j order and uh, some other algorithm which is optimal which schedules it in j comma i order okay it schedules in this order j comma i order okay so in this 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 is possible right this is possible and still I mean, our schedule and the schedule by the optimal algorithm are different. So that is essentially where, so this can this can happen again, actually. Here, after some time, there is actually certain jobs with identical deadlines, and then again, deadlines increase, something like that. So it can, it is, so in a general case, it can be, okay, in, keep on increasing the deadline, and then all jobs with identical deadlines, then keep, on increasing deadlines, then all jobs with identical deadlines, then it's like that. It can so happen like that. Only in these regions where deadlines are identical, okay, in these regions, our jobs, our schedule, and some optimal can differ, actually. So what is the logic? There is an optimal schedule with no inversion and no idle time. That means we have to uh, we have to claim that, I mean, we have to claim that in spite of this, there is no schedule possible, okay, which, uh, which can do better, actually. I mean, in this, in this region, see, this is the case. I mean, no... I have to show that this one in this region, in spite of if I if the if our algorithm uses one uh, one kind of ordering of jobs in this during this region, and the optimal algorithm uses some other type of ordering in this region, even in that case also, the max lateness is not hampered. The max lateness is not hampered because. You, you have to understand this. This is the region of concern. These are the region where our algorithm and some other algorithm can differ. We have to somehow claim that this difference does not harm our algorithm. Or this, even in spite of this difference, we, we can do as good as the optimal algorithm or better or we, we, we actually remain optimal hmm. so this uh, needs some bit of workout so we leave it for today uh, if you have any questions you can ask let's stop for today i will request you to go through the go through the book this exchange argument okay this you th you should read Exchange argument. Chapter four. Mean max lateness. Okay. Okay. I stopped.